A model organism is a species of organism that is widely used in scientific research because it is well suited for studying specific biological processes or phenomena. Model organisms are typically chosen for their simplicity, genetic tractability, short life cycle, and other features that make them easy to work with and manipulate in a laboratory setting. By studying model organisms, researchers can gain insights into basic biological processes that are conserved across many species. This knowledge can then be applied to understanding human biology and disease and developing new therapies and treatments. In addition to their ease of use and genetic tractability, model organisms are often selected based on their similarity to humans in terms of biological processes and disease pathogenesis. For example, mice are commonly used as a model organism for studying human diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease because many aspects of mouse physiology are similar to those of humans. Model organisms are also valuable for testing new drugs and therapies as they provide a reliable and cost-effective way to test the efficacy and safety of potential treatments before they are tested in humans. Additionally, model organisms can be used to study evolutionary processes and the relationships between different species as well as to investigate environmental and ecological factors that affect living organisms. Another important aspect of model organisms is their ability to be genetically manipulated. Many model organisms have well-developed genetic tools that allow researchers to modify and study specific genes and their effects on the organism. This enables researchers to investigate the functions of individual genes as well as the interactions between genes and environmental factors. Advances in genetic engineering technologies such as CRISPR-Cas9 have further expanded the utility of model organisms in research. These tools allow for precise and targeted manipulation of the genome, making it easier to generate animal models of human diseases and to study the effects of specific genetic mutations. While model organisms have many advantages for scientific research, it is essential to remember that no single organism can fully represent the complexity of biological systems. Therefore, it is often necessary to use multiple model organisms and to validate findings across different species to ensure that the results are robust and applicable to a wide range of organisms. There are many model organisms that are used in research today. Here are some examples. First, yeast. Yeast is easy to culture in the laboratory and it grows quickly. Its simple growth requirements make it an inexpensive and easily scalable model organism. The yeast genome was one of the first eukaryotic genomes to be completely sequenced and annotated. This has made it a powerful tool for understanding the function of genes and their interactions. Yeast has a well-developed set of genetic tools and techniques that allow researchers to manipulate its genome in a variety of ways. This makes it a valuable tool for studying gene function and regulation. Many biological processes in yeast are conserved across eukaryotic organisms, including humans. This means that discoveries made in yeast often have implications for human health and disease. Second, Hydra. Hydra is capable of regenerating its entire body from small fragments, making it an ideal organism for studying regeneration. Researchers can easily induce regeneration in Hydra and study the underlying molecular and cellular mechanisms. Hydra has a simple body plan, consisting of a tubular body with a single opening surrounded by tentacles. This simplicity makes it easy to study the basic principles of developmental and cellular biology. Hydra can grow continuously throughout its lifetime and can also reproduce asexually, producing genetically identical offspring. This makes it an excellent model for studying the molecular mechanisms that control growth and reproduction. Hydra is capable of living for several years and does not show signs of senescence or aging. This makes it an ideal model organism for studying the molecular mechanisms of aging and developing interventions to extend lifespan. Third, Planaria. Planaria have an extraordinary ability to regenerate lost body parts, including their entire body from small fragments. This makes them an excellent model organism for studying the cellular and molecular mechanisms of tissue regeneration and repair. 
Planaria are hermaphrodites, meaning they possess both male and female reproductive organs. They can self-fertilize or mate with another individual, making it easy to maintain large populations of genetically diverse planaria. Planaria are small, measuring only a few millimeters in length, and are easy to maintain in the laboratory. They also reproduce quickly, allowing for rapid genetic studies. Planaria have a simple, flat body plan with a minimal number of cell types, making it easy to study the function of individual cells and their interactions. Fourth, C. elegans. C. elegans has a relatively simple anatomy with only 959 somatic cells, which makes it an ideal organism for studying cell biology and development. C. elegans has a short life cycle of only 2 to 3 weeks, which allows researchers to study several generations in a relatively short amount of time. C. elegans has a well-defined genome and a large number of genetic tools and techniques that make it easy to manipulate its genes and study their effects. C. elegans is transparent, which means that researchers can visualize its internal organs and tissues under a microscope, making it easy to study its anatomy and physiology. Many of the biological processes that are important in C. elegans, such as development, aging, and apoptosis, are conserved across species, including humans. Therefore, research in C. elegans can help us understand these processes in humans. Fifth, fruit flies or Drosophila. Fruit flies have a relatively short life cycle, with a generation time of about 10 to 14 days. This allows researchers to study multiple generations in a short period, which makes it possible to conduct experiments and observe the results quickly. Female fruit flies can lay hundreds of eggs in their lifetime, and their offspring develop rapidly. This means that researchers can obtain a large number of experimental subjects with similar genetics, which makes it easier to conduct experiments and obtain statistically significant results. Fruit flies are relatively easy to keep in the laboratory. They are small, do not require much space, and can be fed on simple diets. The fruit fly genome is well studied. This allows researchers to study the effects of genetic mutations and variations in a relatively simple organism. Eating, sleeping, and mating patterns are the same between Drosophila and human. So it helps to understand the behavior in humans by studying Drosophila genetics. Sixth, Xenopus levus or African clawed frog. Xenopus levus produces large and easily accessible embryos, which are ideal for studying early development. The embryos can be easily manipulated, observed and injected with various substances, making them a valuable tool for studying gene function and developmental processes. The Xenopus levus genome has been fully sequenced, providing researchers with a comprehensive understanding of its genetic makeup. This has facilitated the identification and study of specific genes and their functions. Xenopus levus has a high degree of genetic and physiological similarity to humans, making it a valuable model organism for studying human diseases and genetic disorders. Xenopus levus has the ability to regenerate its limbs and other body parts, which makes it a valuable model organism for studying regenerative medicine and tissue engineering. 7. Zebrafish Zebrafish have a well-characterized genome, and researchers can easily manipulate the genetic makeup of these animals to study the effect of specific genes on various processes. Zebrafish reproduce quickly and in large numbers, and their embryos are transparent, allowing for easy observation and manipulation during development. Zebrafish develop rapidly and share many developmental processes with other vertebrates, including humans, making them an excellent model organism for studying human developmental biology. Zebrafish have an impressive ability to regenerate their tissues, including their heart, spinal cord, and fins. This makes them an excellent model organism for studying tissue regeneration and repair. Zebrafish exhibit a wide range of behaviors, including social behavior, learning, and memory. This makes them an ideal model organism for studying the neural basis of behavior and the mechanisms that underlie learning and memory. 8. Mice. Mice share many similarities with humans in terms of genetics, physiology, and anatomy. They have a similar reproductive system, immune system, and nervous system, making them an excellent model for studying human diseases and disorders. Mice have a relatively short lifespan and reproduce quickly, which allows scientists to study multiple generations of mice in a relatively short amount of time. 
This makes it possible to study the effects of genetic mutations and environmental factors on the development of diseases over several generations. Mice are easy to breed and maintain in a laboratory setting, and they can be housed in large numbers. The mouse genome has been fully sequenced and is well characterized, which makes it easier to study genetic mutations and gene function. Mice are small and relatively inexpensive to maintain, which makes it possible to perform experiments that would be unethical or impossible to perform in humans. This allows researchers to study the mechanisms of disease and develop new treatments without putting human subjects at risk. Last is Arabidopsis. Arabidopsis is a small plant that can be easily grown in the laboratory, and its life cycle is relatively short, with a generation time of about 6 weeks. This makes it a good organism for genetic studies, as scientists can quickly observe the effects of genetic manipulation on the plant's development and physiology. The Arabidopsis genome is relatively small compared to other plants, with about 27,000 genes, making it easier to study and manipulate. The genome has been fully sequenced, allowing researchers to identify and study specific genes and their functions. Arabidopsis has a diverse range of natural genetic variation, which allows researchers to study the effects of genetic differences on plant traits and development. This diversity also makes it easier to identify the genes responsible for particular traits. Arabidopsis is a member of the Brassicaceae family, which includes many important crop plants such as broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. Because of this, discoveries made in Arabidopsis can often be applied to other plants. Arabidopsis is easy to manipulate genetically, allowing researchers to introduce or silence specific genes to study their functions. This has led to many important discoveries in the field of molecular biology. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.